Arceus created a universe with three states of matter and 300 solid and liquid poisons that cause his symptoms. Arceus? Look it up. I am the last living cartoon, and the Pokemon franchise continues to be a time-space distortion from which I cannot escape. I've literally been too busy playing Pokemon Legends Arceus to make content on it, and if that isn't proof that a popular piece of media has its hold on me, I don't know what is. It's messed up that I've been enjoying art that I have a sentimental attachment to for its own sake, instead of compressing the infinite multiverse of creative potential in my mind down to the most algorithm-friendly and digestible version of my special interest that also happens to align with the mass appeal reaction to it. <laughs> and I call myself a YouTuber. But I'm not the only thing built different around here. The gameplay of Legends Arceus guts a lot of the guff that stuffs the mother and time sink that your typical mainline Pokemon game is and fills that space with sheer convenience. It's so easy to get lost in the sauce when you're out there hunting and gathering like a primitive 90s kid in his natural habitat. I've been around since the beginning of this electric mouse circus, and never before has a Pokemon game captured my sense of wonder like Legends Arceus has. The movement options are intuitive and place an emphasis on navigating the world instead of navigating a menu, and the game also rewards the player for taking it slow and using the stealth mechanics to find resources and take Pokemon by surprise. There's fun to be had no matter what you're doing in the overworld, and because you can switch approaches on the fly, it's hard to get sick of any one thing. Even battles, which in other Pokemon games are often the grindiest part of the whole affair, are pretty optional. The crafting system offers several ways of stunning, eluding, and even giving food to Pokemon in order to make them catchable without even tossing out one of your own to battle. Funny how these Safari Zone gimmicks can actually be satisfying with the addition of real-time gameplay. Turn-based battles are still a mainstay, of course, and the campaign requires a lot of them to advance, but I was pleasantly surprised by how many of the boss fights tested the player on their maneuvering, rather than on the childishly simple memorization of type advantages. It can be slightly difficult to brute force your way through the tougher encounters in this game without paying attention, and for a Pokemon game, that's an unprecedented level of challenge. As much of an artifact as the classic battle system is, the choice between agile or strong style emphasizes a tactical approach that makes the outcomes of encounters feel like the product of player choice. I know that some would bemoan the lack of abilities and the smaller move pool overall, but for a game where the complexity lies elsewhere, I don't see the need for such extraneous elements. A sophisticated battle system doesn't totally jive with the world that Arceus has established, and like breeding, it feels like a mechanic better left out of the Legends series. I've played my fair share of Wi-Fi battles in Pokemon Showdown, and while it's possible to get your kicks with competitive battling, there's no reason that the maximalism of how to build a top team should dominate every aspect of Pokemon. I like that Legends Arceus has so much else going for it, and that no matter how strong your team is, it's still very possible to get outduked if you take on too many wild Pokemon at once. If I so wanted to, I could delve into the story and themes here, which are fine, but honestly, Pokemon's best stories are always in its Ludo narratives, the stories we create and tell ourselves while we're playing. Getting into a struggle with an aggressive alpha, sneaking up on a rare Pokemon before it disappears, seeing a shiny appear when you least expect it. These are the moments that make your gameplay experience unique, and while I think the characters and world building of this game are serviceable, I consider them and theirs to be of secondary importance. Incidentally, if I wanted to out myself as a basic bastard, I could talk about how this game's best girl is a Rizu. Nobody would be shocked, though. I have an obvious type, and I'm more mad that Game Freak knows what that is than I am horny about this banger of a character design. It's pretty good, though. In conclusion, Pokemon Legends Arceus is peak Atsu! This game is peak Pokemon. It's the most Pokemon-y game ever. There have been games with more Pokemon in them, but none of those games possess that same essential quality which marks a true catch-em-all legend. It's like the inverse of the Star Wars principle of Star Warness. The more Star Warness that a piece of Star Wars media contains, the more dull, repetitive, and insufferable it becomes. On the other hand, Pokemon media becomes much less of those things with the addition of of further Pokemonitude. There's something about exploring a vast world and befriending strange creatures that touches a primal part of ourselves. To impose too restrictive an order on our choices in this regard would strip away the magic from that personal journey. And sadly, that's what badge collecting in the Pokemon League has become over several generations of games. Less a way of proving you're the very best like no one ever was, and more an obligation to show that you'll conform to collecting the same participation trophies as everyone else. The quest for supremacy in battle was always a flimsy marketing justification for these games 
seems to exist in the same genre as other boilerplate JRPGs. The distinctive appeal of Pokemon was always in catching a bunch of weirdos and showing them off to your friends. Like most of us in the fanbase, Satoshi Tajiri was once a little boy on the autism spectrum who just wanted to collect wild bugs, and this simple joy, however improbably, went on to become the highest grossing franchise on the planet. And maybe that level of global success is what it took to carry Pokemon to finally living up to that promise it made to all of us a quarter of a century ago. Which finally brings me to the recent announcement of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Generation 9, a pair of games which have almost no context and which are being released later this year. There's very little to say, shockingly little to say, just so little to say that the idea that anyone could have anything to say beyond, oh, they announced it, is frankly more of an occupational hazard for content creators than an authentic human response. I have zero doubt that some channels out there will be going over every frame of this trailer looking for the tiniest shred of absolutely nothing to remark on because it doesn't matter what they say when you gullible rubes keep clicking on it. Oops, did I just insult my audience? Oh no, uh, how unforgivable. Please leave a comment about how insulted you are. It's a real frustration sometimes knowing that there's so many people out there working harder for content when they could be working smarter. I typically shy away from milking trailers and or announcements like this because 150 times out of 10, there's nothing to add except for redundancy and pointless speculation. The last living cartoon playlist, which this video will be a part of, begins with a short musing on the Spiral Reignited trilogy, a game which also did the YouTube rounds back in 2018 with endless theories and jibber jabber about meaningless nonsense. And that game was a remake where the content and gameplay would be exactly like the original PlayStation games. When the game actually came out, the vast majority of this crosstalk amounted to nothing, and the preemptive buzz sank into the depths of the algorithm like it always does. Once the real art exists, these false prophecies become nothing but wasted time for all involved, and some of the false prophets even have to entirely rebrand their content on the next popular thing, or risk fading into the background forever. Look, I'm not saying that people aren't entitled to stack some paper on this website, but chasing the dragon in the short term is only a recipe for burnout and long-term unhappiness. Be better to yourselves. You goddamn fools, you rats, you chuckle fucks. Still, I guess someone has to temper the absurd expectations of this fandom and point out that the self-same outrage machine that imagined Pokemon Legends Arceus, which I might reiterate, is the single greatest Pokemon game of all time, would be the sudden and inevitable death of a franchise that from any sane perspective would be seen as so entrenched in cultural osmosis and backed by so much capital interest that predicting its fall is like believing the same thing could happen to Star Wars. <laughs> oh, Wait, you grifting, cannon-worshipping, monopoly money, mythologizing nerd lords are always willing to burn the trees down so that your audiences will miss the proverbial forest. If any of you slow bros actually had the stones to evolve your viewpoints, you'd realize that the underlying problems with all the mass appeal art you love is the same damn thing. Late stage capitalism and its effects on how media is made and distributed. But why look at how the world actually works? It's so much easier to pretend Game Freak or whomever are simply out there to spite you and the hardcore gamers you identify with personally, instead of realizing that the upper echelons of every company are dispassionately following the financial plan according to an inhuman global market that has grown beyond the control of any single corporation, let alone any individual human being. Any arguments about passion, artistry, creativity, and alienating the fandom are willfully ignorant distractions that you all drunkenly stumbled into halfway between reality and your chosen form of escapism in hero worship. None of which can bring you any real joy anymore because you all sold your souls to limbo for those baby click dollars. <laughs> Ooh, catch him, catch him, gotta catch him all. Gotta catch him all. Pokemon! <laughs> anyway, I think the new Pokemon game is gonna be real bad. The graphics are stinky. They probably won't even have all the Pokemon. And it's, it's too soon. And the trees, 
The trees will do something. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I care a lot about. Because I'm a really cool, well-adjusted adult with a thriving social life and many creative outlets that personally fulfill me and enrich the world around me. That being said, my starter is going to be Cheezosaurus Rex, and I'm going to pre-order Pokemon Violet, and when the game comes out, you can expect me to release a new video right on the dot, which dogmatically falls in line with whatever the prevailing opinion is about the game quality, then subsequently a retraction if public opinion changes drastically. Yeah, I'm the last living cartoon. And if you need me, I'll be alternatively putting more hours into Pokemon Legends Arceus and busting more fat nuts into my Arizu body pillow.